Hey, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today, I wanna to talk about the five traits of closers and what you can do to develop these traits and start to implement them in your business right away. These five traits are absolutely crucial to you becoming a top sales professional, a top closer, to you running a successful business and continuously closing more deals, bringing in more revenue, performing better month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year. And although they're very easy to do, they're also easy not to do. And this is why most sales professionals and most entrepreneurs make the mistake of missing these five traits. And I want to make sure that you're aware of them so that you can start to implement them in your business. Just before we jump in, as always, you know the drill. Hit the like button as many times as you can. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure to share these videos, bring other people onto the channel so that they can take advantage of these sales strategies, business strategies, and life strategies that I cover here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that being said, let's get into the top five traits of closers. So the first trait of every great closer is a solution or oriented attitude. Now notice I didn't say a positive attitude or a great attitude or a smile or any of these things that are also important to do, but are very simple and everybody should be doing these things regardless. What separates the greats, the closers from the average sales professionals or entrepreneurs is a solution oriented mentality, a solution oriented attitude. And what that means is you really become a professional problem solver. If you're looking to close deals, if you're looking to handle objections, if you're looking to get creative with getting your product or service in the hands of your prospects, you want to be solution oriented. You want to be a professional problem solver. That's really what a closer is. Any closer, any sales professional, any entrepreneur at the highest level is really a professional problem solver because your prospects have a problem that they're coming to you for. This is why the whole thing of people aren't buyers or these prospects weren't buyers and people using that excuse in sales is just ridiculous to me. It makes no sense because the fact that they're there means they have a problem to solve. The fact that they're talking to you means they have a problem to solve. So it's not that they're not a buyer. It's that you couldn't handle them and you couldn't get them to close the deal and take responsibility for them buying from you. It just means you weren't a professional problem solver like you should have been. So any great closer, the first trait that they have is a solution oriented attitude, a problem solving attitude. And to become a great closer, you really have to become a great problem solver. The second trait of great closers is that they have an open body language. And you might have heard this before. Nonverbal communication is most of the communication that we actually do on a day to day basis. And especially when it comes to sales and business, of course, we over communicate everything. Of course, we state our intentions. Of course, we communicate verbally. That's a huge part of selling and negotiating and closing deals. But that being said, the nonverbal communications often play a huge role and most people aren't actually aware of it or conscious of it. Your eye contact, your smile, your body language, how engaged you are or how disengaged you are. All of those make a big difference in your outcomes and in your results. So to be a great closer, the second trait you need to have is an open body language, a body language that's engaged. The third trait of great closers is one of my personal favorites and I always talk about this. So if you've watched my content, if you've worked with me personally, you know I like to talk about this and that is conviction. As I always like to say, when it comes to sales, when it comes to negotiations, when it comes to closing deals, the person with the most conviction always wins. And that's just the reality of it. When people are doing business with you, when people are buying your product or your service or trusting your guidance or your expertise on a specific topic, they're borrowing your confidence. They're borrowing your conviction. So in order for them to mirror that, in order for them to borrow your confidence and your conviction, yours needs to be in place. If you don't have any confidence or conviction in what you're talking about when it comes to your product or your service or making a recommendation to your prospects of what package they should take or which option they should go with or whatever the case might be, if there's no conviction or there's no confidence for them to borrow, then that deal is more than likely not going to happen. You're not going to have the conviction to be able to close them, handle their objections, handle their concerns, and be able to actually get them your product or your service. So every great closer on the planet, whether consciously or unconsciously, has this trait and they have absolute full bulletproof conviction in their offer and their product in their service and that's why they are who they are. The fourth trait is persistence and persistence ties hand in hand with conviction because once you have the full belief, the full confidence, the full conviction on your product or your service solving the problem for that prospect, 
then you can actually persist in the deal. Then you can actually persist and handle objections and close over them and get your product or your service in the hands of your customers. But if you don't have all of the prerequisites that we just talked about, the first three traits, trait number four, persistence is going to be very hard for you because you can't persist on something that you don't have full conviction on. You can't persist if everything else is not in place and your persistence is going to come off as pressure. So a lot of times if you're in sales and you're having people tell you, Hey, I don't like you pressuring me, or it sounds like you're pressuring me, or I don't like to be pressured into making a decision. That just means you haven't done your job correctly. That means you haven't handled everything prior to that correctly. And that's why you're getting that reaction because the great closers always persist and pressure becomes an actual good thing. Pressure becomes a positive thing in that interaction because you're helping them make sense of the best decision for them. You're helping them buy your product, not just selling it to them, but helping them buy it. So in that sense, persistence and quote unquote pressure is a, actually a positive thing. It's something that actually helps your prospect and actually moves this process down the line. So persistence is absolutely necessary. It's absolutely crucial. You need to persist in the deal. And that's the normal. The normal isn't you ask for the sale and it just happens and everybody says yes to you. The normal is most people will give you objections, will give you complaints, will give you stalls. They'll throw things your way. They'll come up with different reasons of why they can't make sense of that decision or they can't make sense of that decision today. And the normal way is for you to actually handle that and be able to persist over their objections and make sense of it for them, help them make sense of that decision. And once you do that, you're going to close more deals. You're going to have better results and essentially achieve all the goals that you have and hit your targets. But persistence is the key there. And before I tell you the fifth and probably most important trait of closers, let me just say this. You know how a lot of sales professionals assume that their prospects aren't buyers. They assume that their prospects can't afford that product, that service. They assume that their prospects might not be ready to buy today. They assume that their prospects are shopping around or any other types of assumptions that sales professionals or even entrepreneurs tend to make around their industry, around their product, around their service. Well, the fifth trait of closers and this is by far the most important. And I think only the great closers, the top of the top, the 1% have this trait. And this is they only assume one thing and that's the close. So again, let me say this a lot simpler. The fifth trait and the most important trait of all closers is they only assume one thing and that is the close. The only thing they assume is that they're going to get this deal done. The only thing they assume is that their prospect needs their product or service. The only thing they assume is that they're the right person to be doing business with and therefore this deal will get done. That's the only thing they assume. So the greatest trait of all closers is that they only assume one thing and that one thing is positive. That one thing is that the deal will get done. That one thing is that there will be an exchange here. That interaction will have an outcome, will have a result that they're looking for. So if you're going to assume anything, assume the close. And there you have it, the five most important traits that all closers possess. And my hope for you is that you take these to heart and you actually implement them in your business today. I want you to execute on these immediately while they're fresh in your mind, while you're motivated to execute on them and build this habit sooner than later because these traits are going to help you achieve all your goals. They're going to help you hit your targets. So why not implement these immediately and execute on them immediately? So that's my hope for you. I hope you got value out of this. And as always, make sure you like the video, comment below, subscribe to the channel and share these videos. Make sure if you know other people in sales or in business that you share the channel with them, you show them these videos and you help them get the right information as well for them to win in sales and business and in life. And on that note, I'll see you on the next video.